I think I'm between the morning and the afternoon. Let me say by good afternoon. Uh, supposed to start uh, afternoon session. We'll keep it warm and nice and tidy for uh, uh, for all of you. For uh, you know, I manage Gender's uh, country business in India. Uh, we have started our operations a uh, couple of years ago. Uh, but the primary reason uh, why we're here is about talk about how the Omni channel really changing and driving the expectations within uh, the retail segment. Uh, so the best way to talk about the experience. So I travel uh, from Bangalore to Mumbai for the job. I've been traveling um, almost for the last 12 years. Travel very frequently. Uh, probably use the predominant one airline that I use all the time. I just didn't want to name the airline. Um, and every time I buy a ticket process, they always ask me, would you like to add insurance? Or the insurance is added to my, uh, my ticket. Do you want excess baggage? The alien probably doesn't understand that I never choose insurance because I'm covered under corporate insurance policy. Every time I travel, I travel probably, I've used the same flight in this one year uh, over 50 to 60 times and still don't understand why I don't like something or why I like something. And I, you, I have a preference of a meal, I have a preference of uh, a seat, but always gets asked about what would you like to have, right? If I do so much of business with that industry or that airline, isn't it pity that the airline doesn't understand me as a consumer? Is it relevant to you as a business? Probably. Let me give you an example. Um, in here, so we put in a simple thing about when I joined Gendesk a couple of years back, uh, Gendesk has a fantastic policy that I can wear jeans to, to office, which is fantastic. I've not been able to wear jeans to work for 18 years in my career, and last few years I've been wearing. And I started working and buying a brand that I like, uh, and I buy the particular jeans, a particular size, particular fit, or maybe a shape, uh, and I go back to my desk, I see an email marketing from the same brand about selling me a company, a product, which is not even relevant to what I want, probably of the wrong gender. I never bought a female jeans for myself, or with my family, but he still send me the same thing. You send promotions about a product which I've never bought. Isn't it nice enough to understand that I have a pattern of buying, I have a style preference that I would have, you would need to sell me anything which is relevant to the product. It's all about how all of these marketing and the sales and understanding the customers coming together. And if this can happen to apparel brand, it can happen anywhere else. Now, Today's world, it's been predominantly driving by uh, the experience. And the experience is not directly related to retail as an industry. If you look at the consumer expectations across the industry, it's been constantly evolving. And that's even demanding to the change of retail industry. Now, it's less about what the customers or consumers buy. It's more about the experience. And, and that, that encompasses here. If you look at the traditional retail business, and, and, and there is a modern retail, and I'm not going to talk about customer experience here, and that's not the point that I'm driving here. A traditional retail would look at support as a, as a cost center, and second to sales and marketing. And what we have seen in the, you know, the modern retail is looks at more a cohesive approach between your sales team and the marketing team, and say so as a support team. Uh, if all of them come together, you can drive the relevant experience to consumers. Now, in today's world, this is about the feeling. Um, if I, as a consumer, and I would like to be feel and treated as a human being, now, the challenge comes here. I expect you to know about me, which even I don't know myself. And that is the expectation of a consumer today. And that's where it, it gets really difficult. Now, you're talking about you know, the expectations, and this is something not new. You should not be surprised that consumers are expecting to do more with you, or you, you know, they expect you to do a lot more than what you're doing today. The challenge is here, from the last so many years we've been talking about the consumer's expectations are changing, but the businesses are not been evolving to understand the consumer. And why is this change is so slow? And that really bothers the industry and all of us. Now let me talk about, um, you know, we talked about value, we talked about experience, and I talk about, let me talk about relevance. Imagine companies cannot do relevant 
conversations if the customers of yours are anonymous, they're faceless. Can you do a business? Probably no. It's always about driving the personal behavior of a consumer because anonymity doesn't give you loyalty. You need to really understand the customer so that you can drive uh, a particular conversation and the personalized conversation which I talked about, which has not happened in the airline industry or even the jeans brand that I've talked about it. Now, you know, your business is less about what you're selling today. It's all about how you really put the experience to customers. Understanding your customers is the core of everything that we do. It's about how your sales, your marketing team, and your support team, all of them coming together and delivering one unique experience to your consumers. That is the relevance of today. Now, many, many customers across the globe feel very siloed, and it very happens to India. Now, let me give you a very quick example. The customers feel siloed customer experience because you provide a technology to support their sales engine. Maybe marketing engine is separate or a technology is separate. And when the customer reaches out to them or reaches out to you for an issue, it's separate technology. Now, if the sales and marketing support are different, let me give you one more dimension. Let's say your customer can choose to buy from your store or from e-commerce, and you differentiate both of them completely different. Oh, you bought it from e-commerce? Sorry, sir, you can't, you can't have a conversation here. You just need to go back and call somebody. And that's where the customer experience really drops, because the customer expectation is to have one linear conversation. It's all about having that conversation. And the, in the industry, if I'm talking about retail industry, and in particular about apparel industry, imagine my wife has purchased a dress, which she didn't like. She returned it. And she returned it to uh, the support. But the marketing team, because the customer has purchased the product is what they remember, they keep bombarding my wife that, hey, this is the product that you might like. Keep buying it. But doesn't understand the same product has been written. Maybe it's because of a wrong fit, probably not of the liking. And the sales team believe that, hey, you asked me to market this product to this user, and the customer is not buying. And that really drives about the experience that you've got to really keep in mind. The customer expectations have changed. The marketing team did not make a note of why this product has been written. And because it's been sold once, you're, you're selling the same product, even though it's written to your consumer again and again. And that really drops the customer experience. Now, about 74% of consumers today will try to reach out to you as a brand in about three different touches or three different channels. Uh, when it's a channel, in-store visit is a cha you know, one, one channel for you. Could be a telephone call the customer makes for complaining or about reaching out for information could be another. Or could be having a or digital presence, having a conversation with you over a chat. Now, the, when you remove the channel barriers for your consumers to talk to you, that's where you can really find a relevant experience. Remember one thing. Today, the customer experience are predominantly driven by digital. The digital is the one which is disrupting. I think you heard about topic about AI, machine learning, and a bunch of other technologies. The consumer preference could change. Today, consumer might not visit your store. They would be buying from probably online. The preference would change. But you staying on course to understand the customer journey will always be in trend. I think that is the key mantra that you've got to keep in mind, that you've got to understand the consumer behavior, track the customer journey to be relevant in the business. Now, customer conversations today are supposed to be seamless. Remember when the consumer reaches out to you from whatever channel or you reach out to consumers, you've got to understand the human behind it. You remember I talked about anonymity and personalization. You've got to be really thinking about personalized experience to drive better loyalty and better uh, you know, share of wallet of a business with, with, with consumer. Now, to remain relevant and to be in business, this got to be done today. It's, it's, to be relevant, to be doing more business, and ultimately stay in the business, it's absolutely important to stay in our omni channel and interact with the customers with across all the channels. Now, if that's being said, this is very relevant for our market. Sorry about that. Um, you know, there is a context between is it experience important or is the price is important? So Gartner has done a research recently and about 64% of the people that they've done a research, they've said the experience matters to them rather than the price. Now, that's from the consumer. Now, look at it from a business point of view. 
if you want to keep dropping your price to get more customers to do more business, is it a right business that you're in? You're in the business to be profitable, to be relevant. But at the same time, you're not delivering and keeping the experience in mind could, could jeopardize this. So keeping all that in mind, we are launching something called Gender Suite today. It's four powerful products all the way across. It, it helps you to interact with your customers across all the channels. So there is a, there is a small packet that should be in, you know, in our seat now. If, if you could help us open that and reveal our product for today, because we are launching it today with all of you, uh, please go ahead and take a moment and open that product. Um, there is a raffle ticket there. Please uh, fill in the details and drop into a booth. Uh, there is Amazon Echo to be one, so which is great. And thanks for uh, you know allowing us to launch a product through you guys today, because we believe that this is will help you to grow Womany Channel. This will help you to understand your consumers really well, and we're bringing it right here, right now uh, at this conference. Uh, make sure that you know go ahead and at our Gen Desk at uh, you know at uh, RetechCon. I'm sorry, uh, as a tweet. Uh, and again, you have a chance to win uh, Amazon Echo, one more Amazon Echo to give away. Uh, so go ahead and see us right across, our booth is right across uh, the door. With that, I want to say thank you uh, for uh, opening uh, the gender suite and allowing us to launch it here. And thanks for listening to me. Thank you very much.